Hi everyone, today I will show you how you can perform agentic retrieval augmented generation with Meta's new model Llama 3.1. We will build our agent using Langgraph and also write the code in a way that we can easily switch from Llama to an OpenAI model without changing a single line of code. That's also one of the beauties of Langchain which makes that quite easy. We will use Llama 3.1 in combination with Olama, which makes it very easy to use open source models via an API. Olama will start a server which runs on port 11434 and provides a standardized interface we can use to communicate with those open source models. First step is to download Olama. Go to olama.com and on the top right you can find a download button. Here you can select the correct installer for your operating system. I'm on Windows, so I just click on download for Windows and download the executable. After downloading the installer, just follow the installation and after that you will have installed uh, Olama CLI on your computer. After the installation, Olama will automatically start a server which runs on port 11434. You can check that if it's running by using netstat on the Windows PowerShell and search for the process running on this port then you know that the Olama server is working. Now you can check if the CLI is working. So just type Olama and then minus minus help. And here you can see we've got multiple commands which we've got installed in our CLI. Okay, now we know that everything works, but we don't have a model yet. Just go to Olama and then on models. And here you can see these are the models we can download with Olama. So we will use Llama 3.1 and we've got three different versions, 8 billion parameters, 70 billion parameters, and even 405 billion parameters. The smallest version has got 4.7 gigabytes, and I think the largest one is around 231 gigabytes, so we will stick with the smallest one. I think the performance is quite good. And then we can just copy the command. And the command is Olama run, and then the model, and here at the end, the size of the model. So let's copy that and this will pull, download the model. For you it will take a little bit longer because I actually just downloaded it and now we can see success. So the model was downloaded correct and we can even chat directly with it. If you just type hi then we can see this is the response from Llama. How is your day going so far? And we could use the model just like that from the CLI. But I want to show you how to use it in combination with Langchain. Before following through the notebook, please make sure that you know at least the basics of Langgraph. You can learn that in this video. Okay, so before we jump into the code, let's first walk through the steps that the agent takes. So we start with an input agent and that makes first a topic decision. So we decide if the question of a user is on topic or off topic. If it's off topic, we just want to provide and standardized off-topic response. Otherwise, we want to retrieve documents based on the questions. After the retrieval step, we've got a document grader node and the document grader will evaluate whether a document is suited to answer a question or not. The document grader will evaluate the documents with a true or false, so a Boolean value. Then we will drop all documents that have got a false value. If we only got false values, then we will rewrite the query and try to retrieve the documents again. So we will try to make a better question and perform the document grading again. If we've got documents to answer the question, we will generate a final answer with that. Okay, I'm now in VS Code and here on the left you can see multiple notebooks. Please navigate to the Corrective Rack Dynamic Models IPython Notebook and first we have to install the dependencies. We've got this requirements.txt file and we can just run pip install minus r requirements.txt I would recommend that you use a virtual environment like I do. And after the installation process, we can now import the required classes. We will import chat Olama, Olama embeddings, chat OpenAI, and also the embeddings class OpenAI embeddings. So we can use Olama and we can also use the OpenAI model and we will just use a environment variable to switch from Olama to OpenAI. So we first gonna load our .end file which is here. I just stored an OpenAI API key there, so you don't have to do that to make that work, but when you want to switch to OpenAI, then you need an OpenAI API key there. Okay, then we create a little factory function. So the factory function is for the LLM and also for the embeddings. So based on the value of the 
environment variable, LLM type, we will use Olama or we will use OpenAI. So if the value is Olama, then we will instantiate chat Olama with the model. And if it's not Olama, then we will use chat OpenAI. The same applies for the embedding model. If it's Olama, then we will use Olama embeddings. Otherwise, we will just use OpenAI embeddings. This implementation just makes it very easy to switch from one model to another. And this is also what makes LangChain so great because the classes here all share the same interface. We can use the invoke method, we can use a invoke, streaming and so on. So quite easy to use that. The next step is to create a vector database. I will use Chroma and we will use the, some fake documents from a fictional restaurant where we've got some information about the owner, about a restaurant called Bella Vista. And here we can see the dishes that it offers and so on and so on. So in a real world application, you would of course have many more documents, but we will use these for a rack. And of course we have to define our functions first. And then we will create our vector store. Okay, so next step is to create our agent with Langgraph. So to create an agent, we first have to define an agent state. We will inherit from type dict and define our own custom attributes for that agent. So we will use the question. We will use a list of grades. So these are yes or no. If it's suited to answer a document, uh, a question with a document, then we've got the LLM output, which will also be stored in an attribute. Then the document itself. So a list of strings again, and also if it's on topic or if it's off topic, this will be evaluated by an LLM too. Okay. So then we can define the functions for our nodes and these functions all use the agent state. So the state works like a dictionary. So we can extract the question by the question key from the state and pass it to the get relevance documents function as input. We retrieve documents and then extract only the page content here from these documents. And we store that as a list of strings in the state again, and we return the complete state. Okay, so first let's create the agent state and now we can define that function. And the next step is to define our document grader. We will use a pydentic model for that and we can inherit from a base model, create our custom class and provide a doc string for the LLM. We also set an attribute, which is a string. And here we provide also a description for the LLM. And the description for the score is question is about restaurant. If yes, then we want a yes. And if it's not, then we want a no. So it's like a Boolean value, but we provide that Boolean value with a string yes and no. We can now use that class to create our question classifier. So the first step is to extract from the state the question again, and then we create a little prompt template. So we've got a system prompt template where we tell the LLM what it should do. You are a grader assessing the topic of a user question and only answer information about the owner of the restaurant, prices of the dishes, opening hours and available menus. If the question is about one of the topics, respond with yes, otherwise respond with no. We use the from messages class method and pass in that system message and also the human message. And here we only pass the user question. So this is a placeholder that will be filled out by the actual question. Okay, then we use the get LLM function. This is used to get the LLM dynamically based on the value of the, how is it called here? The LLM type, currently it's Olama per default. Otherwise we could also use OpenAI to get our uh, LLM class dynamically. We then have to use the with structured output method and pass in our pydentic model. So we've got now an LLM that provides the output here uh, in a class-based way so we can access the result via its attribute. So the result.score attribute. This is the attribute we defined here. So this is what this LLM will create for us. So we first set the prompt, pass the prompt to the LLM use the invoke method where we pass in a question and store the result. We extract the score and save the score in the state and we return the complete state from that method. The next function is a router function. So we will extract the on topic state and check if it's yes, then we will return on topic from that method. Otherwise we will return off topic. This will be used to route to the 
reg part or to the off-topic part of our agent. The next function is for the off-topic response. And here we only set a single string. I can't respond to that. We could also use an LLM to create that, but I think it's fine to handle off-topic like that. Okay, now comes the more complicated part. So we want to go to the on-topic. So we again need a grader, and this time we will not grade the question, but we will grade the documents. And this is why it's called grade documents, but it has it follows the same logic like before. We've got a score, and the LLM should um, evaluate if a document is relevant to the question, yes or no. We will now extract the documents here and the question. And then we will use a system prompt. You are a grader assessing relevance of a retrieved document to a user question. If it contains keywords or semantic meaning related to the question, grade it as relevant. Give it a binary score, yes or no. And then we will again set our system message and create a human message with a retrieved document where we only pass a single document and the user question. This will be then evaluated with a yes or no. Again, we will use the structured output method where we pass in great documents, and then we will iterate over every document and use the invoke method for each document where we pass in the document and the question. At the end, we will create a list of scores. So this will be a list of strings, yes and no, and we will assign that to the state again and return the state from that. The next function is the generation router. So we check each document, so we extract it from the state. So this will be a list of yeses and nos, and we will check if we've got any yes inside there, and then we will filter for the documents which contain a yes. If we don't have a yes, then we want to rewrite the query. So we will return a string just called rewrite query, and we will route to an LLM to rewrite the initial query or the initial question. Otherwise, we want to generate a final answer from that. So this is our next router function. And now here you can see this is our rewriter node. So what we're gonna do here is that we extract the question and pass in a system prompt. You are a question rewriter that converts an input question to a better version that is optimized for retrieval. Here we pass the system message again, and here's the initial question and formulate an improved question. So nothing really new, we will use the rewrite prompt, pass it to the LLM, and pass that to an output parser. Then we use the invoke method, pass the question, and then overwrite the initial question with that new question. So let's run that. And then we've got one more node, and that is generate answer. So in this case, we will extract the question and the documents. And now we want the LLM to answer the question based on the following context. So this is a normal rec prompt, and we will just pipe that rec prompt to the LLM and that to an output parser and use the invoke method again, store the result again in the state and return the state from that node. Okay, now we defined all of our functions that we need for our agent, and we will use the state graph class, pass the agent state here to the, to the constructor, and then add our nodes. We will add topic decision, of topic response, retrieve documents, rewrite query, generate answer, and also the document grader. For the off-topic response, we want just an end node as edge. So if we create the response, I can't respond to that, then we don't want to do anything else. This is just the final answer. For retrieve docs, the next node is document grader because first we retrieve the documents and then we want the documents to be graded. Then we've got our first conditional router. So for the topic decision, we've got this on topic router function. And based on the answer, we've got on topic, then we want to retrieve the documents. And otherwise, if it's off topic, then we want to route to the off topic response node. Then we've got another conditional edge for the document grader. So we check with the gen router function if at least one document is suited to answer the question, if that's the case, we want to route to generate answer. Otherwise, we want to rewrite the query and pass it back to the retrieve documents function. This is achieved by this edge. So we've got rewrite query and the next node should be retrieve documents. For generate answers, we don't have another node we want to run. So we just pass the end node here. Now we only have to set an entry point for our agent and that is topic decision. This is the very first step that has to be done. 
Okay, and now we've got all of the logic. We just have to use the compile method to compile our graph now. And now we can display our graph. And we can see this is the graphic I already showed you before. We've got topic decision first, on topic or off topic, off topic response if it's off topic, otherwise retrieve the documents, grade the documents, rewrite the query if no documents are suited to answer the question. And if we've got documents, then generate the final answer. Okay, so now let's use it. And the first question is, how is the weather? So this will hopefully end in an off-topic response. So let's run it. And the answer is, I can't respond to that. So the LLM grader evaluated that this question is off-topic and it ran into this branch here. So next question, who is the owner of Bella Vista? Okay, so that's not filtered out. As you can see first, we've got no, no, no. But actually I think this should also be enough to answer that. So next try is also no, no, no. And now we can see that we extracted a document that is sufficient. And now we can see according to the context, Antonio um, Rossi owns Bella Vista. That is correct. Okay, so Lama was able to answer that, but in my opinion, it should already have been able to answer that on the first try because we can see that we extracted the correct document on the first try. Bella Vista is owned by, by Antonio Rossi. But always keep in mind, this is only the smallest version of Llama with 8 billion parameters. So don't expect the quality to be at the level of GPT-4.0 or so. So, but it's actually very easy to compare it. Just go to the .n file and here you have to set the correct value for the LLM type. So type in LLM type and then use OpenAI or just don't use Olama. And then we can use the chat OpenAI class and also the embeddings from OpenAI. Okay, so one step I recommend is that you just enter another model. Here the default model for chat OpenAI is the 3.5 Turbo, but we can also use the newest one, GPT-40 or GPT-40 Mini, which is a lot cheaper and also quite powerful. So let's restart the kernel and run everything and see if that's better than our Llama model. So we can see that is correct. The evaluation is correct. And we can see that we've got a document at the first try. And the answer is the owner of Bella Vista is Antonio Rossi. Okay, that's it. I don't want to evaluate the quality of the models, to be honest. There are enough benchmarks for that. I just wanted to demonstrate how you can use Llama 3.1 with Langgraph for agentic rec and write code in a way that you can easily work with other models too without changing the code itself. If you like that, please leave me a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye bye.